Camille, good afternoon, Minister Dexter, and good afternoon to all of you wonderful people. You know, today is really a beautiful Saturday, Minister Camille. I listened to you, you know, mention that just now, and indeed it is. And that Zion's daughter, thank you so much. We give God praise and honor and glory. Father, we thank you, God, for this time where we could, God, there's so much to glean from your Holy Spirit. I thank you, God, for this ministry. God, you have chosen us to do this, and we are very grateful for the opportunity. Oh, God, my members of the panel today, oh God, and even our guest speaker today, God, we thank you for the reacts, oh God, that you will continue to release your unction upon us in the name of Jesus. For those, oh God, who will be listening, or those who are on the platform even now, and those who would be listening to this video after it's up uploaded on YouTube channel. God, I pray that their hearts will be blessed in the blood of Jesus and we declare and decree that everything will be done decently and in order, all for your glory, in Jesus' name. Amen. Nice. So I want to hand that over to Minister Dexter, President. Good afternoon to all of you. And Minister Dexter, the men will be carrying on today. I will just be sitting and relaxing and allowing them to do their do. We know that our men are very capable, Minister Dexter, Pastor Mark, and we have our guest, Minister Dexter, we'll introduce him. So people sit back, relax, and enjoy this segment. God bless you. Minister Dexter. Amen, amen, Doc and Pleasant. Good afternoon to every single person on the platform. You know, we welcome you to this evening to our Singles and Married Couples segment. And, you know, we have a very, very interesting topic this evening. We're talking about healthy body, healthy sex life. And, you know, Pastor Mark, I just want to say good evening to you as well, Pastor Mark. And, you know, um, just open up the floor just for you to say, say hi to, to, to all the folks on the platform as we get ready to discuss this very important topic. Um, and I would introduce the, the speaker. So, Pastor Mark, where are you? Just, just say good evening to the folks and let's continue. Good, good afternoon, Dr. London, folks. Good afternoon. I am here. Thank you, Minister Dexter. Amen, Pastor, and such a pleasure to have you here with us. So as we begin to steam up the conversation, I want to introduce to, 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 to the platform this afternoon our guest speaker, and he is none other than Mr. Keon Taylor. He is a certified personal trainer through the Aerobics Fitness Association of America, known as the AFAA, certified in the art and science of coaching through the University of the West Indies, and a certified health and nutrition coach with the Transformation Academy. He, he's been training and working with individuals for 10 years, well, I dare say over 10 years, and he's helped fitness groups and personal clients achieve goals using three transformational tools, which are a change mindset, good nutrition, and effective exercise. He's the author of two ebooks, Seven Simple Steps to Absolutely Crush Your Fitness Goals and Shape Utopia, 50 Answers to Your Ideal Physique. So join with me as we welcome to the platform and to the panel this afternoon, Mr. Keon Taylor. Mr. Keon Taylor, good afternoon to you, sir. Good afternoon, and thanks for having me. I'm really humbled to be on the platform as your speaker today. And as you mentioned, Dexter, it really is a very interesting topic, you know, looking at physical exercise, you know, and how it impacts your sex life. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm just going to share briefly on my journey. It's not going to take long. I'm going to talk about a why, because everyone needs to have a why in terms of what they do right the why actually drives you i'm going to talk a little bit on the stats as it relates to exercise and um how it helps your sexual performance i'm also going to talk up about how important physical exercise is for a healthy sex life right and then i'm just going to close off with some good habits right so basically my journey i grew up, you know, playing football, basketball, just playing sports on the whole. And it's something I thoroughly enjoyed, you know, on the evening playing with friends. But one particular day, I got a knee injury. So I tore my ACL. That's basically like an el elastic in your knee that kind of holds your knee together. 
So when that happened, you know, I realized that I would not be able to play sports the way I, I actually did in the past. Now, the doctors told me I could either manage it, I would be fine. But if I really wanted to play sports, I'd have to get surgery. So I decided to manage it. And I transitioned over into fitness because if you can't play sports, then taking care of your health, using exercise would be an excellent tool. So I trans transitioned over to fitness. I actually got in the best shape of my life and I became a trainer, you know, and the rest is history. You see me here. So I'm going to share my screen with you. I have a PowerPoint. Right? Healthy body, healthy sex life. I already told you all about my journey. And now your why. Why does anyone do what they do? So I have two pictures here. One is basically a bed, you know, that's where everything takes place um, sexually, you know, in a couple's um, marriage. And next to that, I have a toilet, um, toilet bowl, all right? So these two things actually have more in common than you think. Some people, as they age, they actually have trouble getting out of bed. So the things you used to do when you were younger, you realize as you get older, it becomes challenging, right? And I remember listening to a trainer, right? He was talking about his 86-year-old client. So we now looking at the toilet bowl. She said, the only reason I'm working with you is that I need help when I get off the toilet seat. So she's 86. Uh, she has trouble standing and doing the basic things that a regular person actually does, the things you know we take for granted. Because as you get older, your muscles, they are not as strong as they used to. So taking care of yourself physically is very, very important, right? So your why has to be really big. Now, the topic we're talking about is physical um, exercise, you know, and how it impacts your sex life. So we're going to look at that as being our main why. All right. So in doing research, you know, and just being familiar um, with athletics and athletes, sometimes coaches tell their athletes to abstain from sex before a big game, right? And the question has to be raised, um, does sex actually affect their performance? No, it does not. But coaches, you know, they still tell their athletes, you know, to refrain. It's not necessarily the sexual act, but the effort the athletes put into getting a partner, into actually leading up to sex is what actually drains their energy. And, you know, as I dive even deeper into the study, I basically came across some studies that were done. So for example, in Massachusetts, it's very difficult to get studies done, you know, locally or in the Caribbean. So I'm working with what I got, uh, Massachusetts, um, over or a little under 2000 men over age 40. Once they exercised, they reported the best sex and the fewest sex problems. In Singapore, so we're not only looking at men in the US, 90 obese men on average, age 44, once they're involved in some type of exercise program, they actually it improved their sex life. Now, an interesting point to note here is that they compared men who did low or moderate intensity exercise. And, you know, some people, they take it easy when they exercise. So it's very low impact. You know, they may go for a walk, keeping it simple. But if you up the pace just a little bit, so if you, if you up the level from low to moderate, you're more likely, you know, to show an even greater improvement in your sex life. North Carolina, exercise habits and libido among a little over a thousand men, male athletes, regular moderate exercise, 
improve their sexual desire, right? So not only performance, but the desire or wanting to have sex. Now let's look at a woman, 322 women were actually studied and we're looking at an average age of 45 years. 46% um, were post-menopausal or over 90% in stable relationships. So this is the study that was done with these women. 67% of the women who were sedentary and those who had less than one hour of physical activity each week, 23% were active. So 23% of the women who are active, they exercise at least one to three hours each week. Just under 6% of the women were very active, spending four to six hours of each week on physical activity. And roughly 4% were extremely active, exercising more than six hours each week. The women's results. The physically active women had better scores on sexual function, right? Their, their desire and their arousal, lubrication, orgasm was even greater and they had less sexual distress. So if you look at some of the terms that were used in the study, they were least likely or less likely to have HSDD, which is hypoactive sexual desire disorder or female or FGAD, which is female genital arousal disorder, right? So from these studies, it shows that exercising could positively impact your sexual life, both on a men's side and the female side. So how important is physical exercise and maintaining a healthy sex life? Let's just dive a little deeper. It improves blood circulation and cardiovascular strength. Now, there are two things that we have in our bodies, which are veins and arteries. So the veins actually, it's on our surface, so we can see it. If we go to give blood, they usually will try to hit a vein. Um, the vein actually takes the blood to your muscle and the arteries actually take the, takes blood away from your, sorry, the vein actually takes the muscle, the blood to your heart and the arteries actually take that blood um, away from your heart. Now, as you get older, your arteries begin to harden, right? So maintaining some form of physical exercise would actually help with blood flow, right? Um, when you use your muscle, you, your body needs to provide blood. Life is in the blood. Blood actually, you know, carries oxygen throughout your body. It provides nutrients to the different areas of your body, and it also removes waste. When you exercise, you actually strengthen your heart. Your heart is a muscle. Your heart, um, I believe it's within a minute, it pumps, or with one pump, it pumps about five liters of blood throughout your body. And that's a lot of blood. We know a one liter bottle, some, some of us, they, we drink water, a one liter bottle is actually a lot. So imagine five liters. Exercise, it improves your strength and your flexibility, and it helps with the different sex positions. So sometimes it's easy to get in a rut where you do the same moves over and over and you're not willing you know, to step outside of the box, you're not willing, you know, to challenge yourself. And it may just be because physically it's challenging and it's demanding on your body, you know, but once you exercise, do some form of exercise, it could actually help you, strengthen you, give you, you know, the stamina and the flexibility to go out of the box to try different positions. Exercise, you know, it helps improve your self-esteem. So maybe in a bedroom, one person, they may be gaining a little weight and they may not be feeling so good about themselves. So when it comes time to have sex, they, they don't want the light on because they don't like how they look, 
And you know, we all know exercise helps with weight loss. When people say they want to lose weight, they say, I need to go to the gym, I need to run, I even need to go for a walk, right? So exercise overall it helps with the weight loss and you feel good, you feel better about yourself. It reduces stress. And sometimes one of the reasons people may not be able to perform in the bedroom is because of stress. They have stress-related situations at work, maybe at home, and it makes it challenging. So when you exercise, it's been shown you know, to reduce your level of stress. So many people, they would tell me, you know, I don't really feel to work out today. Let us be a rest day. And I tell them, you know what, still do it anyhow. And at the end of it, they enjoy themselves. And there's a saying, no one ever regrets a workout. You usually regret the workout that you didn't do. So exercise is good to help reduce stress. Here's a big, big one. It lowers the risk of erectile dysfunction in men. And the first point um, I mentioned improves blood circulation. Exercise would also help with that, right? So as before, your heart, you know, is a muscle. It pumps blood throughout your body. When you exercise, you make your heart work even more and you strengthen it and your body was is created so uniquely that it adapts so for example there was a client um i had a few years ago she struggled to do a push-up it was a lot of work she didn't really have the upper body strength so just with progression progressive movements doing it against a wall doing it against a table a chair and then eventually doing it on her knee all the way to a full push-up. It took a while, but she was able to do it. So with exercise, you just keep doing, doing it and you'll be able to improve. You'll be able um, to get better. Um, but with the blood flow, it helps with the erectile dysfunction. All right, so three things to remember. Too much of anything is not good. So some people, they may, they know about the benefits of exercise. So they tell themselves, you know what? I'm going to go hard. I'm going to go all the way. I'm going to go six to seven days a week and I'm not going to stop. But exercise actually puts your body under stress, but it's a good kind of stress. It's a temporary kind of stress. But if you keep doing it, you won't be good to yourself and you definitely won't be good to anyone. You're going to be, you're not going to have all the energy that you want. You're going to be drained and your performance in a bedroom is not going to be good. Consistency is key. So you don't want to start exercising and feel good about it. Keep doing it. And then all of a sudden, life happens things get in the way and then you stop you not you're not going to get all the benefits of exercise if you do it like that you have to keep at it and even just setting a simple goal you know what i'm gonna go brisk walking for um two times for the week it's a simple goal but it's very very effective because your goal is consistency. Going two times for the week is better than setting a goal of going four times. And one week, you only go one day. The next week, you hit three days and you keep missing. Consistency leads to emotional stability. And exercise should only be for life. Sorry, it should not only be for sex, it should be for life. At least use it to train to perform better. Why not we use why don't we use exercise to help us perform, you know, in the bedroom? Think of it as you're being like an athlete, right? So you train for life. 
All right, so I'm going into some exercises that help with sex. So there's an exercise called the plank. So I don't have any pictures, um, but the plank is, is an exercise that actually works your core area, right? So you're on your elbows and you're on your toes. You're actually, it's kind of like you're holding your body up in the air and your core is actually being engaged. You need your abs, your back also comes into play because when your abs sometimes get tired, your back now starts doing the work. So a plank is a good movement. Maybe if you do three sets of 10 seconds each day, and as you get better, you know, you just progress maybe three sets of 15 seconds, right? So a, your basic plank, it works your core as well as your back. And, you know, it, it helps you to perform better sex in the bedroom. Those type of um, movements that you need to do, you have a strong area to help you with it. Push-ups, push-ups help with your upper body and your arm strength. So, you know, as you are in the bedroom, the movements you need to have, you know, as you push your body up, as you move your partner, push-ups is really help. They're really helpful in terms of helping you, you know, with that upper body strength. Glute bridges. So it's an exercise that works your pelvis, your hamstrings and glutes. And for the men, it can help you with good thrusting, right? So it provides more pleasure for you and your spouse, right? So the glute bridge, that's where you're actually on your back and you're using your legs to push your, like your, your hips up in the air in a control movement. You could actually hold, you could squeeze, um, you could actually use a light weight and rest it on your thigh to provide more resistance, but it's a great exercise, you know, that helps. Jump squats. So jump squats, we all know squats is kind of like standing and sitting. Jump squats progresses the movement. It helps in terms of um, your body now has to do more work. You have to jump you require a different energy source to jump off of the ground. And when you land, you have to get ready to jump again. And a lot of high intensity interval training programs utilize jump squats. So it helps in, it helps improve your cardiovascular endurance, right? Kegels, right? So both men and women could do this um, even though they associate this a lot with, with women. So Kegels is basically when, if you're urinating and you just stop it midstream. So what you have to do to stop it midstream, that's what the exercise does. And for women, for women, once they do this, it could actually help to enhance the male's pleasure, right? When he's inside of her, it helps with that. Um, and for men as well, it's actually something, you know, you can do to help you with maintaining an erection because the same muscles that you have to use to stop urinating midstreams, you actually work in those muscles that could help with um, erections. All other exercises, all other exercises are good. Brisk walking, running, um, squats, dips, you could do body weights, you could do weight training, you could jump on a treadmill, all other exercises, I would say are very, very good, right? So it doesn't just stop with these exercises, right? You also incorporate other exercises, especially as it re relates to a workout program. All right, so good exercise habits, because I could tell you the, the what, I could tell you the how. So now I'm going into the how, I could tell you the why, the how. 
as I mentioned before, set simple goals that are easy to achieve, right? So instead of going for the big home run or trying to hit a six, you know, after this presentation, I'm going to work out five days this week and you haven't been active, then it's not gonna work. Let me ask you a question. You can put the answer in the chat, right? So within the last six months, how many of y'all were active at least two times, two times being 30 minutes of exercise, 30 minutes or more of exercise within the last six months? You could just put me, put me in the chat if you were active at least twice within the last six months. All right, so within the last six months, you were active at least twice. All right, good. Within the last four months, were you active at least, at least four times within the last four months? That is 30 minutes of more of exercise, whether it's um, workouts or brisk walking. Right within the last four months, were you active at least four times? All right. Within the last three months, within the last three months, you were active, let's say, at least six times. All right, good. Within the last month, were you active at least four times within the last month, 30 days? Football, good. Walking, within the last 30, 30 days, where you are active at least four times. All right, and this past week, were you at active? Okay, Petronella, 10 times. Within the last week or this past week, were you active at least twice? Within the last week, anyone? Were you active at least twice? Go to the gym three days, yes. All right. All right, so this, you know, you alone would know, I'll give you an indication of the type of goal that you could actually set that would be simple, that would be realistic. So if you're somebody, you're, you've already been active constantly, then two days, you maybe you might want to increase it to three days. If you're someone, you weren't really that active within the overall six month period, maybe you could start with a goal, you know, that's realistic. Maybe two days, two days might be something that you can do. It might seem I could do more than two days, but you may have to start actually small with a number that you can consistently do and then gradually increase it. So if after two weeks you were able to stick to your two days, then maybe you could try a third day and see how you do for the rest of the month. And then you could even go from there. But consistency is the key. Do something you enjoy. So some people um they want to copy what other people do so i want to get a gym membership they get a gym membership because their friend is a member at a gym but they don't really use that membership or maybe they may see some workout videos on youtube they want to try it they want to do it but they don't really enjoy the exercises are too hard and it's a pre-recorded video, so it's it's tough. And you basically, instead of following along with the video, you just basically watch the video. So if you like playing a sport, try playing sports, right? You could do something you enjoy because you're more likely to keep doing it. If you like swimming, then swim. If walking is something that you like to do, then you can go for a walk. And the focus should always be on making it a lifestyle. So it's not necessarily a goal. It's not necessarily you um, only want to get better in bed, 
because you know you know of all the benefits of exercise um, leading to good uh, sex. It's about making it a lifestyle and mix up your routine. So for example, if you've been walking for a while, try going for a simple hike, right? Explore Trinidad, see what it has out there. It's a really beautiful place. So mix up your routine. So you don't always have to do the same thing over and over. Good nutrition habits. Try to include green leafy veggies in your daily diet as it, you know, it contains um, different nutrients, ions, proteins, right? So find ways to in include them in your diet. If you're making a sandwich and you have maybe spinach leaves, then put the leaves in there. If you're maybe scrambling eggs, I don't know if you all do it, but you could put spinach leaves in there as well, right? And try and find ways to get good green leafy vegetables in your diet. We eat a lot of carbs, but we don't eat a lot of veggies. We are a carb-rich society. And everyone, when it comes to losing weight, I need to cut down my carbs, right? Carbs provide us with energy. Eat different color veggies. So it's not only necessary about greens, get some melon gen, some purple, get some carrots, Right, and try different, maybe different recipes that use these different um, veggies, right? Get all the nutrients you can from each of these veg vegetables. Eat fruits that are in season. Yes, a lot of the vendors in the market, they sell apples, they sell pears, but we also have good local fruits that we should also try to get, right? So, Eat fruits that are in season. We know when avocado is in season, we usually, we know it's there because we see people selling it all over the place, right? So that's a prime example. If it's in season, that means the supply is great. So the price should not be as high. You know, and even when you go to the market, connect with some of the vendors. They see your face all the time. A lot of Trinidad market vendors have this way when you're buying something, they'll put something extra in your bag. They want you to come back, All right? Drink two to three liters of water every day. So get a water bottle, right? And make marks on it and set goals to drink maybe a quarter of it before 10 a.m. See how you do with that because water is very important. I'll tell you a quick story. How first, and I understand how important water is. The first, the very first time I gave blood, no one told me to drink a lot of water. So I wasn't always this healthy fitness coach. No one told me to drink water. So I went, it uh, actually was not in Trinidad. This was abroad. So I went to give blood and they had a hard time getting extracting the blood from my body because it just wasn't flowing and then she asked the, the nurse she asked the million dollar question did you drink water today and i paused i stopped and i realized i had not so she kept sticking the needle i was painful because people came in and they left and i was just there trying for this blood to flow and the only reason it wasn't flowing was because I did not drink enough water. Life is in the blood. Blood delivers oxygen. It delivers the nutrients, you know, th throughout your body. It also helps to remove waste from your body. So water is what helps your blood to flow and it helps keep you hydrated during the day. All right. I would be a mess if I did not include script tears on taking care of your physical body. So there are two script tears. First Timothy 4, 8, for bodily exercise profited little, but godliness is profitable unto all things, having promise. Right. So what this is doing is not negating exercise, but in the scheme and the scope of things, the spiritual impact 
is greater than the physical impact, but we still need to take care of our body. It's just comparing it to the spiritual things, but we still need to exercise. We can't use the script here for bodily exercise, profit at little and the Bible says it doesn't do anything or it doesn't really do much. It's just doing a comparison. The context of that is doing a comparison, but I'm sure we've known people who, um, I've known a lot of people who've passed away in their sleep, uh, silent heart attacks, these things. And it's all because, you know, sometimes we don't take care of our body. We go hard at other things, except taking care of our physical body. First Corinthians 11, 31. So whatever you eat or drink or whatever you do, do everything for the glory of God. And, you know, we only have one body to live in, right? We don't have multiple bodies. We don't have a reset. We don't have a do-over. We just have one body, right? And what we eat and what we drink will de determine how our body operates. And food is basically information you give your body. So when you eat cake all, when you eat cake all the time or sweets all the time, you're sending a message to your body. When you eat veggies, you eat a cake in moderation, you're also sending messages to your body more positive, right? And God also wants us to glorify him by our bodies, you know? He wants us to take care of our, ourselves. If you take care of yourself physically, it's going to impact every area of your life, right? If you have a pastor who passes a church and taking care of their body is not really a priority, then it's not, it, we want our pastors to be healthy because they already are stressed out. They already have a lot of things going on behind the scenes that we don't know. So taking care of their body would help them to combat these things. All right, so this is just some of my references. All right, and... That concludes my presentation. Amen. My dear brother, you know, Mr. Taylor, listening to your presentation and, you know, I thank God for your presentation. And, you know, as we formed the conversation, one of the things I was thinking, I was thinking about is, you know, I was asking myself, would you, when somebody lends you something, would you misuse it? You know, if somebody lends to you, you borrow something from somebody, let's say a car, you borrow a car from somebody, would you take this car and drive it all how and drive it down inside of the rough road and dirty it up and all these things? And then, you know, and then, and then it, I asked that question because, you know, when I looked at, when I took in the information fully, what you were saying, I looked at the word of God as well, and it said in 1 Thessalonians 5, 23, may, may God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you true and true, and may your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord. And you said something profound as well just now when you spoke about it. it's not just spirit, but it's holistic, it's spirit, soul, and body. And our body is the temple of God. So if, the, if our body belongs to God, that's why I ask the question, if you will borrow a car from somebody and just run it through the mill and do all kinds of things with it. For some persons on the platform today, and even for me, I could attest to the fact that sometimes it's easier to see and harder to do. And therefore, I, I, I thank God for, 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 for the revelation because I was listening and I'm saying to myself, you know, next I have to do better, you know. I say to myself, I say, you know, we have to do a little better when it comes to exercise and things like that. But one of the things that 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 came to mind, and I wanted to ask, because basically you've answered the questions I we had to ask today. But one of the questions I want to ask for the persons who may have injuries and may be wondering, you know what, I want to exercise. I really want to, but I have this foot pain, I have this knee pain, I have this hand pain, this elbow pain, this wrist pain that I keep getting all the time. Um, how do you, and what advice do you have 
in relation to that. And before you answer that, I want to make it clear that, you know, when we speak in the context of sex this evening, we speak this afternoon, sorry, we speak in the context of married couples. We speak in the context of husband and wife. And therefore, that is the, the foundation of when we speak about sex in the confines of marriage. I just wanted to put that out there so persons coming onto the platform understands that the platform speaks from a biblical context and we follow the word of God. And also when we speak about sex, we speak about kingdom principle, godly sex under the confines of husband and wife in marriage, all right? So I don't know if you wanna jump in there and then I will hand over to Pastor Mark to join in, in the conversation. So go ahead, Mr. Taylor. All right, well, I've got an injury. So it's my anterior crucial ligament. I got it playing football and I had no idea what the ACL was, but when it happened, I've done my research and I know what it is. Um, it prevents me, I can play sports, I'm able to, but it's at my own risk. Um, with respect to exercise, I exercise like normal. Now, when it comes to heavy lifting, I'm very careful where that is concerned. With my injury, I'm able to exercise, but there are others who may have injuries where they experience pain. My suggestion, if it's chronic and it's very uncomfortable, is to see a doctor and let your doctor know what's going on. You probably may have to do an MRI, depending on the nature of your injury. You may have to do go to a physiotherapist and they would recommend special exercises for you. And once they clear you, they would once they follow your progress, then they will give you the clearance. Hey, you know what? You could go work with a trainer now, or you could do regular exercise. So that's that's the um, journey I would have someone take. Doctor, maybe they have to do an MRI, physiotherapist, and then when a physiotherapist gives clearance, then they're able to start regular exercise. Amen. And, and thank you so much for that, because I myself have my own struggles when it comes to injuries and exercise. And, you know, um, even while we, while we look at this from the context of, you know, the singles and married, we want to speak to singles as well. This is an opportunity here. This is an opportunity for us to one, and we always say it, to do an assessment of living in, in both body, soul, and, and spirit. This is an opportunity for us to assess our lives now and, the, you know, come up with, you know, what do I need to do to present if you're single, my best, the best version of myself? To the person God is going to send my way? Am I going to allow myself to become just, just continue to add on the pounds and add on the pounds, add on the pounds? And I dare say it's not only about the poundage because fitness is not only about weight. And again, Mr. Taylor could probably add to this, but fitness is not only about weight because we have some persons who are slim, appears fit, and they have high cholesterol. We have persons who physically looks as though they fit and they 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 they, they have six pack and they have everything and we, and and not necessarily healthy, and so as I said that I wanna give way to Pastor Mark. Pastor Mark, jump in as we continue the conversation. Thank you, Mr. Dexter, and uh, Mr. Taylor. You know you you speak about a lot of stuff there today and. You know, even the question I had was to ask you, and you run over that too, you know, because my question was how important is physical exercise in maintaining a healthy sex life? And you know, and I know you, you went down that road and you share a lot of stuff that, you know, exercise is so important. You know, just the other day, and I was laughing at one of my brother, he was telling me, and you mentioned it, I and now I realize that this thing's serious. He tell me the other day, he said, he said, when he do jump squats, no, nobody doesn't tell him that. He said, Mark, I just realize when I do jumping squats, he said, my sex drive feel, I feel ready to, to go. But I, I laughing at him now because like, what are you talking about? But then I, I, I see where you talk about that, that jumping and, and so, so tell me a little bit more about that before I, I go into something as I might want to ask you. How important is that 
Because he, he telling me, and I laughing at him. I said, what are you talking about? He said, yeah. He said, Mark, when I go in the bathroom, time I do a little squat, I am pumped, I am ready, and I enjoy sex better. So give me a little idea what's happening. Yeah. So it's pressure you're putting on your body, and your body has been created so unique, unique by God that if you do something that your body is uncomfortable with, what is when you do like a jump squat, mm -hmm. um, your heart now has to pump harder and faster to get blood going to your muscles. Your body begins to tell itself, you know what, we need to get better. So it gets stronger. Um, the response time, it gets better in terms of getting blood to your muscle. And that translates over into the bedroom, right? Because when you're getting up, getting up and you're ready, your heart starts pumping. It's some, it, it's the same type of, um, what's the term? If you want to say chemistry taking place in your body, that's happening in the bedroom. Because you're mm -hmm. doing a sort of training when you do jump squats, when you're in the bedroom, it's more or less the same thing that's translating over. Um, better blood flow, um, strong, stronger in your legs, and those type of things. So that's how it helps. Well, I, I can't wait for the program to finish to go and do some jump squats. <laughs> you know, um, another another thing that I wanted to, to add, you know, you talk about physical exercise, you know, and I believe sometimes I am all, it sometimes it's laziness, eh? Because, you know, it's a person, you, you go and you buy all the equipment and you have everything home ready. And time you get, the first week, second week, you go on and the next thing you know, it pack up, you know. I I have stuff I I I buy, but then I don't know if it's laziness sometimes because exercise is not is not all of that a good feeling until you, until maybe you get to grow in it and love it, you know. But um, how do you motivate yourself to really to go there? Because I know the exercise too because I have a health I have a health clinic, and it improves the memory. You know, and, and it helped with the function of the brain too, because some persons might find, hey, I forgetting plenty, but like I can't remember because that oxygen not going to the head, the blood flow not going to the head. Matter of fact, some of the ringing in the ears, I get to understand too, although I know some of them thing is demonic. Some of them is because blood not flowing to the head. So you, you find a person might be forgetting a lot, a lot. So, you know, I might just tell a person, I might say, you know what, just take a little walk. To help with the blood pressure no 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 heavy exercise take a little walk you know but um one of the things that i want to look at and maybe ask you about too um how important um sleep you know you know i because sleep you know most of the time if a man don't sleep he is he, stressed out or if a woman don't sleep she stressed she, she depressed she have anxiety she she can't function. So how important something like sleep might be for you, a person that exercises? Yeah. Sleep is important. Um, I've actually, I actually started a podcast a while back, and I'm supposed to have a sleep guy um, come on. He's an expert in, in that field. Um, but I was able to chat with him, and even on my own research, some people recommend like seven to eight hours, but most people don't usually get that amount of sleep. Um, the quality of your sleep is also important. So we have blackout curtains. Um, I try to get off my phone at a certain time. One, try to have blackout curtains to have the room black. I don't sleep with my phone by my head. So I put it kind of in an area where if an, a notification goes off, I wouldn't, um, it wouldn't disturb my sleep. Um, I would say the main thing is to try and get good quality sleep, right? Have a dark room, try and shut off, you know, your phones, maybe 15 to 30 minutes before you go to sleep. So you don't want to be stimulated in your brain. Also try not to eat too late as well. Um, but sleep is good. It's very good for recovery. It's good for rest because we need to rest our body needs to regenerate we need to recover um so when i asked he said roughly between seven to eight hours but i would also like to add the quality of your sleep is very important um 
be, be, I know Dexter wants to chime in. Water as well. Um, people, when they're competing, they try not to drink too much water closer to the night because you'll be getting up to use the bathroom a lot. They'll disturb your sleep. Yeah. Um, okay. Mr. Dexter, I want to ask what this, this specific question because um, now this is, this is something that I tell my clients and them a lot too because, you know, you mentioned, you know, the way that we eat too at the same time, it have a lot to do with our sex drive, you know. I tell you, we eat, I mean, persons eat all different, and we do like blood analysis. So some, when I look at a blood, sometimes you can see there's no oxygen, no no blood flow. You see a lot of parasites, you see a lot of worms. I mean, parasites is worms. So a lot of, as you say, sleep, exercise, water. And um, one that I want to ask you, what about a multivitamin? Because I have a little something that I take a note here. Number of studies suggest that your diet plays a big role in determining how strong your, your sex drive is. And having the right food can improve your sex drive. And, you know, low sex drive can lead to many problems in a marriage. And it's very important that your diet include enough vitamins. I just try to tell because you don't get it in your food hardly that you, you you eat. So I would always tell, you know, the clients, listen, try and get a multivitamin. A lot of persons don't take vitamin. They just try to eat properly and that's good. But I will always suggest a multivitamin. So tell me what is your thought on that? I had a yeah, I had a conversation with a dietitian and she said, yes, a multivitamin is good. Um, because, you know, sometimes you don't get all the nutrients we need. Let's say a multivitamin or even maybe a fish oil to help supplement, you know, the nutrients and vitamins we don't get. So okay. I would say yes. And Okay, beautiful. And you mentioned something too, you know, sometimes, you know, sometimes a man's so excited when, he, when it comes to sex and before he can give any his wife any kind of pleasure. You know, he done, he, he, he good already, he, he, he finished. And you know, you mentioned, you know, and I think that was good advice. A older guy tell me that before, a, a few years ago, he said, you know, when, when, you, when you're passing water and you mention it, if you could do some stoppage and stop the water while, you know, you're passing that water. Um, so give me a little info on that again. What that do? So let's say that sperm ready to fly. So what you're saying, a man could control that too? Is it possible? <laughs> no, I don't think it's, it's possible. Um, but the um, the Kegel, the act of stopping the urination, it helps strengthen that muscle that would help you in terms of maintaining an erection. So you could try, you know, doing those exercises during the day, maybe a certain time. Um, but kegels or those things it helps you from the conscious the conscious part right so, so you know the erection sometimes is subconscious but from the conscious part you really want and to help sustain it it could help you along those lines in terms of keeping it once you you know at least do those exercises so you so let's say i i wouldn't i wouldn't pass some water so is, is it possible to try to see how long you could hold it for? Because I know you could get infection if you hold up water too long. I'm talking yeah. about why you're you passing that, 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 that flow of water. Is it wise to like three, four times, hold it for a second, a minute? I don't yeah. know. Well, I would do it without even, you know, you could, you could practice it without even when you act, the act of urinating. Just, yeah, just to be on the safe side, you could do it like that. Even while it's, you're saying long right now, you can do that. Yeah, you could try it like that. You could have a little time on your phone. Wow. Okay. That is beautiful. One of the things to, because, you know, what I try to tell some women too at the same time, because sometimes when they're getting a little older and even some younger women too, they will say, you know what, some of them exercising and yet they have that dry, that dryness of the vagina. You know, some, some is like, you know, sex is too painful, you know, that kind of way. And I would always tell a woman to, I would say, you know, because she might be exercising, she's doing everything, 
but when it comes to sex, it's very painful for some women. And um, uh, I will just tell them at least get at least K a K Y jelly, you know, to have to, to, to use that whilst you're having sex and um, and drink a lot of water too. I will always rec water is very important. And I like when you when you mention water, you need water to, to spit, you need water to wink your eye, you need water to smile. The body operate and you know on water, and I think that was the real, real, real great info that you released there. But you know, some women because of um, even though there's some of them exercising, sometimes they have hormonal imbalance, and some of them they just don't feel for sex too. But all the exercise because of the age and all these kind of thing. So I will still recommend for a woman to you know get 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 something for your hormones, get a a hormonal you know, balance that stool you back up and, you know, give you back that that feeling too at the same time. Let me allow Minister Dexter. Thank you so much, Pastor. Well. <laughs> yeah, but that's all right. We're going with the conversation. And, you know, one of the things I was thinking about listening to you gentlemen was the fact that, you know, we, 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 we heard the Prime Minister talk about the endemic and the fact that COVID-19, they've rolled back a lot of the, the, the measures and now the place is more or less beginning to become more free. But in some psychological circles, the, it is said that or believed that um, a habit is formed in about 21 days or so. And therefore, we've been in this COVID-19 environment for quite some time. And I remember before COVID-19, I was walking every Saturday morning. I was going on long walks and climbing up big hills. And my wife and I, we used to be exercising. And with the measures as they came, more than 21 days passed. In fact, a lot of the COVID-19 habits, or the habits that developed during COVID-19, a lot of us still have these habits up to today. So one of the questions I wanted to ask is, what advice do you have for us in breaking these habits that we formed during COVID-19? Because, I mean, if you become if you become in tune to now, you get so accustomed to not walking, not running, you, 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 you was very active, now you're no longer active, but you don't feel, you no longer feel that level of encouragement, you know? What advice do you have for the persons who may be sitting saying, but I want to, but... But yeah, so I would st say start gradually. Um, we have to start somewhere and trying to do too much too soon would burn you out. You won't feel like doing it. So start gradually. Um, don't try to do too much too soon. Um, I actually wrote an article in the news there. If I could, I'll see if I could find it and put the link in the chat. But starting starting back gradually is the key and knowing yourself um e even like a little a simple habit like putting your shoes your sneakers close to the door so where you see it all the time and some people may think it's so simple and uh, that won't work but eventually one day you're going to put it on and walk out the door right um it's challenging it's tough if you haven't been active for a while but start start back gradually don't try to do everything all at once even if it's just one day during the week you're gonna go out you realize after you finish you know i feel better you come back in and then maybe you go out again another day again you feel better and eventually you start a pattern and you start a cycle and you start back yeah yeah and you know one of the things i would encourage as well is the fact that it is an opportunity now that things are opening up to you know encourage each other encourage your spouse go out with your partner and, and exercise and have an evening walk with your children because i wanted to invite sometimes we look at ourselves and i realized long time when when i was young growing up for example I was out there. I was making popcorn. I was by the river. I was playing football in the evening. Now, nowadays, we ask the children to go outside and they tell you they're playing football and they're expecting to get the ball to go with them. And it's because they're on PS4 and, and, yeah. or PS5 and they, they're playing football. So, you know, we have to also, as kingdom people, find ways to not only become active 
with ourselves or with our spouses, but include our children. Because if the legacy, if the word of God is saying here, um, and let me pull it up. If the word of God is saying here, as I read in first, first, um, first Timothy, first Thessalonians, sorry, 523, it said, may God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you true and true. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless. And one of the responsibilities we have is not only to live it, but to teach it and pass it on to our generations to come. So that our children, our kingdom children, should see the, the importance of physical exercise as well, being active as well. Our children should be the difference. When you look at our kingdom children, they should, it's okay to play PS4 and PS5 where they should have an active life as well outside of the house, where it's okay for them to go outside and play football, take a run, um, do something they like. And let me just give this testimony um, as we prepare to probably take a few questions from the panel, from, from, um, from, from the, 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 the participants here this afternoon. I broke my leg in 2007, two places, Tibia and Fibia. Um, I stayed in hospital for 35 days awaiting an operation and I broke my leg in the skating rink. I did love to skate and I would roller skate to train for marathons. Would you believe, Minister Dex, I used to run miles and miles for every year. And after I broke my leg in the skating rink and recovered, I never roller skated. I never went back on a roller skates until last week saturday was the first time in over 16 years i roller skate and i was frightened i was furious i was wondering last week sunday it was yes and i was wondering um why well, you supposed to break your leg again supposed to, this and supposed to that and i'm saying this because some of us on the platform we used to do things and we believe now we get too old to do it. Um, we lifestyle change too much to do it. And I took exactly two minutes to get back into the go with my roller skates. And I had a good sweat. So when my dear brother this evening, when he asked in the past week, who have been active, I was glad to pop my hand, but he said twice and I could only account for that one time. And I, I'm saying to myself this evening that, you know what, I'm going to do better. And I wanted to give that testimony because, listen, there was something that we used to do that we're not doing anymore that is healthy to do, that is okay to do. And if you were never active, then this is the point in time when you could say, you know what, as he said, the gym might be boring. To go in a gym and just keep lifting weights, lifting weights and counting might be boring. But there are so many other things. You could go hiking. You could go swimming, you could go kayaking, you could, you know, so, you know, the, the, this is one of the things that I, I wanted to point out here and, um, and how important it is to pass on the legacy. There's a legacy that we're passing on and it's not only, um, yes, um, spirit, spirit led and Holy Ghost filled is good, but our bodies are the temple of the Lord. And if our bodies are not fit, if our bodies are not well enough, we cannot do the work of God if we're not taking care of our bodies. And this is the thing. If you're not drinking water, one of the mistakes I made in life was I wasn't drinking enough water from a child. And I started to develop kidney stones because I wasn't drinking enough water. Don't wait till I get a kidney stone to realize how important it is to drink water, brothers and sisters. Because for those of you who know what that is like, you don't want to experience it. So that what I'm saying is there are consequences to not obeying the health laws regarding our bodies. And don't wait for the consequence to then realize that, you know what, I, I had to start exercising. And I know to us men this afternoon on the platform, I know to us men who believe that every pain is a gas pain, I know to us men who wait till we in crisis then to start to exercise, Sometimes, and for everybody, we wait till this, the doctor says you have high blood pressure. We wait till the doctor says you're diabetic. We wait till the doctor says you, you have some health issue. Um, your heart, you may need an open heart surgery. Yeah, you have high cholesterol. And we wait till we are diagnosed with something, then to make a step and say, you know what, I need to exercise. All in a sudden, you could lose weight. All in a sudden, you could follow the health regime. And I'm just saying this afternoon, you know what? Let us do better as kingdom people 
and let us work at it. As, as our brother is saying this evening, it's a gradual process. Don't try to reach 100 one time, but start. And that's what I'm hearing from him. Just start. Just start. So, um, Brother Taylor, Pastor Mark, if you all have anything else you want to share, you can go ahead. Um, Brother Taylor, you can go ahead first. Pastor Mark, you go after, and then we would open up the floor for a bit of questions because I'm sure there are persons on the platform this afternoon who may have questions based on the presentation and what we will be, what we were discussing here so far. Brother Taylor, what? No, I don't have any input right now. I'll just listen to any questions that anyone may have. All right, beautiful. Pastor Mark, is there anything else you want to say before we open up the lines? I will, I will, one suggestion I will give some persons, you know, there are some, let's say some constipated, you, you don't go off, some person going off for the week. Now exercises will help you have a nice bubble movement. And you know, for the persons who have any problems sleeping, exercise will help with your sleep. And um, after researching on this topic, it showed that exercise help with anxiety and it helped persons who go into depression too as well. So it's something great. Um, there are some persons when they start exercising, you know, research will show that if you have a lot of bacteria, you know, you could get breakout on your skin too, you know, because things moving out, you could get, you know what I mean? So I will suggest to some persons to do a colon cleanse. You know what I mean? Matter of fact, do a warm out and do a colon cleanse, flush the colon out and take your probiotic, put back in your good bacteria and get yourself going. Even while I'm speaking to you, I'm speaking to myself too at the same time. You know, I, I need to do better and I need to do some more jump squats. <laughs> so the minister that is it for the time being for now. Yeah, thank you. And you know, as I hand over to Minister Camille, you know, one of the things you said, my dear brother Taylor this afternoon that really stayed with me, I said, make it a lifestyle. Make it a lifestyle. And that continues to resound in my mind. Make it a lifestyle. Don't just aim to do one thing, but make it a lifestyle. Just as how we are to make kingdom living a lifestyle, this is part of kingdom living. So let's make it a lifestyle. Minister Camille, I'm going to hand over to you for us to manage um, some of the questions we will take this afternoon. Um, so the, basically, over to you, Minister Camille. Thank you so very much, gentlemen. You know, at this time, we would like to open the floor to allow, you know, some brief questions, just about two. Um, you can indicate by the show of your hands using the raise hand icon, and I would signal to you and have you unmute and go right ahead and pose your question very briefly. Sister Petronella, you can go. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm posing this question to the gentleman, Mr. Taylor. Um, just some advice. How wise or what words of wisdom would you give to someone over 50, over 55, and um, feels very energetic and is exercising? Do you encourage them to go do hikes and up their game with exercise? Okay. Well, first, I'll have to know where you currently are in terms of being active. Are you currently active? Are you um, doing something every week or is it something you, you want to start? No, um, I exercise like... Um, an hour about five times for the week. Pump fitness. Well, you're good to go. It seems like everything in order. Um, I would say you could go ahead. Okay. Thank you. Welcome. Do we have another question? And, you know, even as we wait for the question to come and, you know, Kian, this is for you. I remember, you know, really holding myself, waiting for my husband. And when we met, there were times when we would speak on the phone and he was very concerned about my hours of sleep. So I would go to sleep, 
sometimes after two in the morning, I just can't find the sleep. And I am up looking for all kind of housework and thing to do. And when he says to me, Gail, I, I ready to sleep, you know, I'm like, just stay up a little hours, a little two hours, you know, that type of thing. And when he, when we speak the next day, he'd be like, what time you went and sleep? And I'll be like, well, I went to sleep about half past two, three, they are about. And I still had to wake up early the next morning to prepare for work. And I thought that was so normal. And only when I got married, I saw where that, you know, because it was it was years. I remember living by my mom and then moving out on my own and having that struggle. Did not know it was a struggle, just going with it. And I saw how that impacted upon my sex life because here I am, the demand for sex is 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 here. And I am called upon to, you know, do my do. And looking back, I saw where, hey, I thought this was okay. So, you know, even if you could speak to that in terms of that burnout as single people while we wait, you know, let's just get the patterns together. If you could speak to that a bit. All right. Single people now is actually the best time. You don't, you're not really accountable to anyone as you would be in marriage. So I would say developing good habits. Um, you mentioned going to sleep very late. So there's someone I'm working with right now. She goes to sleep very, very late. And it's normal. It's a pattern. It's something that she just does. Um, and working with her, because she's so used to it or so accustomed to it, going to bed early would be like foreign to her. All I just told her to do was focus on getting good quality sleep. So with the, how many ever hours she's getting to go to sleep, make sure the room is dark, you stop using your phone at a certain time, and let's just focus on the quality of sleep before we even change this habit that you've had for a long period of time. Um, so singles, I would also say you have not all the time in the world, but you have time, you know, to work on changing, you know, bad habits, um, especially when it relates to getting not enough rest or not enough sleep. Um, just focus on getting good quality sleep. And then maybe you could look at going to sleep a little earlier, trying it, see how it works, and just go from there. Yeah. Amen. And, and you know, Mr. Taylor, when we look at sleep in itself, if we do a poll on this life here today, we are guaranteed to find a high number of persons not sleeping adequately. And even in the mental health field, um, in, in, in my profession as a psychologist, we find that sleep in itself is one of the biggest issues in relation to mental health problems, even in depression, and it comes across a lot of mental health disorders as well. And the thing about it is, when we look at the sleep patterns, quality sleep really amounts to at least four uninterrupted hours of sleep per, per night. And that means that when you are in REM sleep, rapid eye movement sleep, rapid eye movement sleep speaks to the fact that while we sleep and we reach REM 4, that's when your eyes actually begin to roll in your head. I remember playing games with my brothers and then when they were younger, while they're sleeping, you open their eyes and you see the eyes rolling around in the head. That is actually called REM 4 sleep, REM sleep, rapid eye movement sleep. And if you are not reaching REM 4, then you can sleep eight hours for the night and wake up tired. You find yourself sleeping whole night and you're waking up drained and, and, and the, the slightest noise you get up. So one of the things we have to train ourselves to do as well is to find a way to get at least four hours uninterrupted, not even a bathroom break of uninterrupted sleep to ensure that your patterns of sleep changes. You know, I mean, Mr. Dexter, you mentioned that, you know, I think what happened to there are some, some of us, we're not disciplined at all. I think we confuse our body at times because tonight you go and sleep for six, tomorrow you go and sleep for 10 o'clock, then you go and sleep for one in the morning, the body's confused. So me personally, what I try to do, I go one specific time. I don't care what I'm doing, very rare. I will stay up later. If I say I go and sleep 11 o'clock, 
listen, I don't care how what I, I just dropping everything, become a body. I train my body to get tired at that time in a sense then, to go and sleep. Now, the word of God promised to give us sweet sleep. I want you, I want to just sleep into it at the same time and say, you know, it's the work of the devil too at the same time. The reason why I say that, you know, a young lady called me this week and and she said, she said, I just want to sleep. I just want to sleep. I said, can I pray for you? And I just say, you spirit that keeping this child from sleeping, come out. And she start throwing up. And then soon I just say, I say, how are you feeling? She said, I want to sleep. I, she said, Pastor, I, I sleepy. I sleepy. No, I just I had to train that because demonic spirits, they can rob you of your sleep too at the same time. And we know hormonal imbalance and, and depression, folks, it's real. But sometimes all you need to is pray in Jesus' name. I see it happen this week. I just had to throw that to you. All right, go ahead, sir. Amen. So, so, so folks, as we, as we begin to bring the curtains down this evening, gentlemen, I just want you both, if you can give a brief closing remarks, and um, Pastor Mark, if I could ask you to, to just, just say a prayer for the persons on the platform, and um, as we bring the curtains down on, on the proceedings today. Closing remarks, gentlemen. Mr. Taylor, you can go ahead. All right, so there's something called mind dumping. Sometimes we are working on something before we go to sleep, and it's on our mind. Sometimes we stay up even later because we're trying to finish it. Now, if you plan to go to sleep at a certain time, you could write down all the stuff you know that you have on your mind that keeping that's keeping you up. Maybe you need to finish up a project. You need to make a note exactly where you reach. You write it down. You write down a couple of other things, not a big to-do list or anything like that. That's where you clear your mind, you dump the stuff, stuff out on your mind and you put it to the side, you get it out of the way and then you go to sleep. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Pastor. Uh, the last thing I will want to say before I pray, you know, and I just like to talk about experience, you know, last week I had a case, somebody from the away to that, well, I'll just mention it to help you. You know, and this woman looking for a divorce. She looking for a divorce. So sometimes they're doing all the exercise, they're doing everything right, but in their heart they want a divorce. And I just, I say, I just want to. She asks a prayer. I just say, I want to pray with you. And she called me this morning. She said, Pastor. She said, I don't even understand myself. She now enjoying her partner. She don't want no divorce. She laughing. She 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 don't even understand what happened. You understand what I'm saying? Because they're exercising, feeling great, but you are divorced still. And a lot of time, listen, she don't want me to talk to the husband. I say, girl, come on and give a testimony next week. Because it was a demonic spirit with all the fit and everything, feeling wonderful. That, listen, I want a divorce. We're going for this divorce. And now sex is good. I'm talking about this this week. You understand? So some women and men too at the same time, you need prayer and you need deliverance because some exercising until the, 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 the tin, like, I mean, like a whip, you're feeling great, but in your heart, or oh, there's a demonic spirit having sex with you. And this spirit will make sure that you could do all the exercise till you dry up. They will make sure that you ain't feeling for your husband and every time all you meet is argument. And she tell me, she said, listen, I do even, pastor, I can't. She said, pastor, what happened? My whole mind changed, everything changed, but the deliverance was great. So folks, after you've done all you can, then you could stand. After you're done, get your prayer, your deliverance, you do everything. Don't give up on your marriage just so at all, at all, at all. Amen, I wanna pray for you. I wanna pray for everyone here, single and married. So Father, mighty, wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, Right now, God, I pray for every person on this platform in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father and God, I take the authority that you have given unto me in your name, God. I, I take authority against every form of spirit, every spirit on this platform, Father, that is not of you. Every spirit that is robbing, oh God, your, these men, these women, oh God, are asleep right now in the name of Jesus Christ. I, I speak to you right now and I command you out. Every spirit that is stealing your sleep, 
Come on. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I break this curse off for you right now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I take authority against every lazy spirit that telling yourself, I can't exercise, I can't do it. Every spirit of doubt, I rebuke that spirit. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I rebuke every spirit of witchcraft, that, that God that is tormenting your people, that is, that is destroying marriages. In the name of Jesus Christ, oh God, Lord, I pray for persons that God, they will enjoy yourself with their partners, oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ. I release the fire of God over this platform right now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, every contrary spirit, every unclean spirit, every spirit that come to mash up marriages, I command you, go now, out, in the name of Jesus Christ. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. And Father God, I cover the people with your precious blood. I, I pray for peace. I pray for love. I pray for unity, oh God. I pray that God, this, this great info that God we have received today, God, we will put it to work in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, you say that our body is your temple. I pray that God, we will begin to exercise and God, we will take better care of our body, God. God, we will sleep better. We will we will eat better. We will drink better. We will talk better. God, we will live better in the name of Jesus Christ. We will live better and not better in the name of Jesus. Father, I just give you glory. I seal everybody with the blood and the fire of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Amen. Thank you so much, Pastor Mark, and we thank you, all the members and the panel. And at this time, I just want to hand it right back over our doctor, Dr. London. Thank you so much, gentlemen. And uh, may I say, uh, Mr. Taylor, Kian Taylor, you did an excellent um, job. I just love the presentation. I believe that you are very comprehensive and very simple and very practical that the simplest anybody can understand. You know, and sometimes we make so much excuse but, um, you know, what I love about what you did as well, you showed statistics, you know, and, and be able to see and be able to understand what is so difficult to understand, you know, about what you have shared. It is very simple, you know, and um, I, I really want to encourage persons, all of us, whether we are Christians on the platform or not, that we need, we need to exercise in order to maintain good health. And one of the things you mentioned, um, Kion. Um, you spoke about not just for sexual health, but also, you know, for our life. It's important for life. You know, um, the scripture that Minister Dexter would have placed in the platform first, Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23, it says, may your whole, may your whole body, body, soul, and spirit be kept blameless. All right? A lot of times you focus on the spiritual, but the Bible says your body. And today, you know, um, our dear brother, he came to talk about the importance of body yeah so we want to focus on the body yes i know you know to read the bible and pray but your body are you exercising and i believe as well that there's a difference See, there are so many different things that we have to look at pastor max spoke about deliverance and that has its place all right but if we can we can get the deliverance and be unhealthy yeah we can get it and be very unhealthy we have a responsibility to eat properly we have a responsibility, particularly those of you who are married, and be putting it within, within context, Mr. Dexter would have placed that on the platform as well, that sex is for married people alone. That's what the Bible says, and that's what we hold fast to. So if you are not married, then what you're actually doing today is getting the information and begin to make the lifestyle changes that are required so that when you get married, you can perform well in the bedroom or wherever else you choose to do it. Mm. All right, that's important. What, what stood out for me is when you mention consistency, that is important. Um, Kion, consistency, you know, and starting small. You know, I wanna, I wanna say that walking is a very good place to start. And even if it's one day and then two or two days or three days, I walk. I started walking three days a week, you know, and um, it really makes you feel so much better because we can have the exercise equipment. I have it and sometimes I go on the exercise equipment, you know, but what I found is that as I start walking now, I mean, when I when I come back in the morning and I walk like quarter to six, six o'clock, I go out. 
and I walk. And when I get back in, I sometimes I go on the exercise equipment and I still do some stuff and I use my weights. And the way you feel is amazing. So for those of you who are not exercising, you are missing out. You know, I know it's difficult, but one of the things the Spirit of God told me when I had to start to do the walking, he said, don't think about the way you feel because to get out of your bed, all right, to walk is not so easy. But, you know, don't, don't study the way you feel. Just do it. And, and, and but the Kian alluded to that. Just do it. Don't study about, oh my God, how I feel. Just do it. And I really have my sneakers. You know, you mentioned it. I have my, my sneakers right by the door. I could put it back in, but I said, don't let me leave it in. You know, because you know it's always there. And I want to encourage us that we want to be healthy as we, we, we do missions, as we preach the gospel, we, we, we um, go out on the Great Commission and we have to go about and we have to preach and we have to teach and we have to be engaged in ministry. We need to be in good health. All right, we have no excuse. We place it on the platform. You have the information. All right, I want to encourage you all to, 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 to apply it. All right, have a cut off time for your sleep. I don't make joke with my sleep. Even when I was, was at UV, I believe that I should not be studying after 12 o'clock in the night. If I have to do an assignment, when that time comes, I close my book. Because sleep is important. See it as important. All right, I know that sometimes some of you may struggle with the, the not, not going to bed early. Mr. Camille would have alluded to that, going to bed in the morning, and that is a lifestyle. But that is a lifestyle that you have to break. And you have to really ask the Spirit of God to help you to go to bed earlier, earlier, and get the quality sleep that Mr. Taylor spoke about. And by the way, Mr. Taylor is my nephew. And I just sat here, Fiona, and I just listened to you. You, you really know your stuff. I know that you are a man of excellence. I know that you are well-learned, you are certified, and you are well-trained. And I know that you practice what you teach. Yeah? So God continue to bless you, you know, and um, use you to to be a blessing to so many people. I know you have clients all over the place, you know, and um, I know that you have good results as well. So again, I want to thank you and um, thank your wife as well for releasing you to come on the program and to share with us the body of Christ so that our lives can count, you know, can count. And you know, Pastor Mark spoke about the weight. So I know, I, I know someone, Pastor Mark, who did the detox. He went through the detox and he changed his diet and he started to, to do his exercises and so. And folks started to fatigue him. Boy, you're getting so small and wherever, wherever. And he said he couldn't take the fatigue and he started back going back and eating and stuff, the things that he used to do. And I'm saying to you, what is important is that you are healthy. It doesn't make any sense you are, you are, you are, you are big and you're unhealthy or you're slim and you're unhealthy. However you are, you must be healthy. And I think that should be the focus, all right? Make sure that you do what the Bible says, body, soul, and spirit must be kept blameless. Amen? So gentlemen, thank you so much, Minister Dexter and Pastor Mark. You did a fantastic job as well. I didn't have to, I'm so glad that I didn't have to talk and see anything. I'm just happy about that. Minister Camille, thank you so very much. And folks, it really was a pleasure having all of you this afternoon. See you all next week, please go on. Minister Camille. Again, we want to thank the gentleman, you know, for really carrying on a wonderful segment this afternoon. Uh, Mr. Key and Taylor, we want to say thank you. And, um, you know, we always say whenever we come here on a Saturday, whatever topic the Spirit of God reveals unto us, so just, it says that, yes, this is what he, you know, requires in our growth, you know, areas for, for us to deal with as we grow as believers. So yes, health is included, that sex life, you know, area of sex, when you think about husband and wife joining and becoming one. So we want to say thank you for your input. Um, I would allow you to just leave your number for persons to contact you, you know, should they need further guidance or information or, you know, that personal trainer kind of thing. Yeah. Nice. So Mr. Taylor would have placed his contact right there. 339-7112. Again, 339-7112. 339-7112. So we want to say thank you to those who took the time to be a part of our segment. Yet another Saturday, you know, indeed a wonderful segment and you know let's just shift our focus to the screen as we you know follow through with our announcement
we invite you to fellowship with us. Every Sunday morning we meet for our Sunday morning worship glory service from 9.30 a.m. The service is also linked via our Facebook platform so that our Facebook viewers can be blessed. Every Wednesday evening from 6.30 p.m. we have a very interactive time of Bible study and discussion. On a Saturday from 4 p.m., Join us for Destiny Shalom Outreach Ministry Singles and Married Couples segment with our facilitator, Dr. Shirley Alman London. The link that you use to log in remains the same on a Sunday morning, on a Wednesday evening, and on a Saturday afternoon. If you have never been a part of our Singles and Married Couples segment, Head over to YouTube and visit our YouTube channel at Destiny Shalom Outreach Ministries. Again, Destiny Shalom Outreach Ministries and you would have access to all of our videos. We ask you to subscribe and we also ask you to share so that other persons can be blessed. When you subscribe, you are able to be notified when our videos are posted to head over and view, view, view. Also, on Isaac 98.1 FM, every fourth Sunday of the month, we have our radio program. The name of our radio program is Family Matters. So join us from 5 to 5.15 p.m. and be blessed. Nice. Thank you, Minister Dexter. And we will head into our special announcement. Yes. Thank you. Destiny Shalom Outreach Ministries, in collaboration with Walking in Freedom Ministry, presents their Alabaster Women's Conference and the team, The Cost of the Oil. So we look forward to this amazing, you know, meet up for our women, this amazing conference, this amazing, amazing gathering, this amazing evening. We look forward to it. Um, our speakers and mentors, we have Reverend Stacey Beckles and we have retired Major Cheryl Richardson. So, you know, they would be our speakers for the evening and we look forward to hearing from them. So invite, invite your, your friends, invite your neighbors, you know, women who are here, tell a friend to tell a friend. And yes, we know that there are men who may want to pop in and be a part. Yes, they are welcome as well. But you know, it's a women's conference and the theme, the cost of the oil. We have prophetess, you know, Karen Alexis. She's from Walking in Freedom Ministry. And we have our very own Dr. Shirley Alman London from Destiny Shalom Outreach Ministries. So again, Sunday, the 1st of May, 2022, from 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. And the Zoom code that you use this afternoon to log in, it's the same Zoom code that you're going to use on that afternoon to get on the inside. And if you're wondering if there's a cost attached, no, it's free. So come in, receive, and be blessed. Yes? Thank you so much, Minister Dexter. So again, we wanna thank everyone. You know, the announcement was there just to add, you know, on a Sunday morning, we have our, uh, our Sunday school from 9 a.m. to 9.25 a.m. So those who desire to, you know, fellowship with us, you can have your children join you know, as well and, you know, be blessed, yes? So we wanna say thanks again and we look forward to continued fellowship and growth with you. We look forward to seeing you yet another time when our Zoom doors are open. We will log out in two minutes. Shalom, shalom. <laughs>